extreme weather, we've seen a lot of it. And in fact, now we see more extreme weather events have been increasing over the past couple of decades now. In fact, this week, for example, several cities along the country uh, saw record snowfall, including Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, you had your snowiest day since 1985. Little Rock, yeah, which had its snowiest day in 146 years. Then the Arctic cold would try to get out of, but between February 12th and February 17th, we had over 3,000 daily record cold temperatures reported. Now, from hurricanes to wildfires to flooding, the increase in all this extreme weather and all the extreme weather events, well, they definitely have the fingerprints of climate change all over them. And that can be also kind of tough to explain to your kids. So we got some help for you. I want to bring in Mary DeMocker. She joins us now. She's the author of The Parent's Guide to Climate Revolution. Thanks for joining us this morning, Mary. And there are several chapters of your book uh, that kind of outlines ways for parents to talk to their kids of all ages about climate change. So what are your best tips uh, of having and starting this conversation without kind of overwhelming your children? Sure. Yeah, I think the first thing to do is actually to listen to our children. They need to be asked what they know, what they've heard, what they're worried about, and what they may be feeling. It's a big crisis. It's going to be with them their whole lives, and a lot of them have a lot of big feelings about this. We, as parents, can validate those feelings, and we can even be honest and say sometimes I share some of that confusion and some fear with you, and we are going to work together as a family for solutions at home and out in the world. I think the key also is to pair, and, well, to pair any information that we give them with the good news, which is scientists have given us a roadmap out of this crisis. And there are millions of people working on solutions. And as a family, we can help them. And can you talk about why you say it's very important to have emotional support and empowerment uh, when you talk to your kids about this? Yeah, they need to be empowered to be prepared for the future, for the extreme storms that we're having. They need to be empowered to actually help advocate for policies that are going to protect them in the future. And a lot of young people are hearing a lot of doom and gloom or disinformation or cynicism, especially the older kids out on the Internet. And they need to know that there are solutions that they can be part of. And you also say listening is a very important part of the conversation for parents. It's something that parents, you know, we have a hard time listening to our kids, but that's crucial in this conversation. It's absolutely crucial. And once we're, we have a sense of what it is they're looking for, do they need maybe a plan for keeping the pets safe? If there's a wildfire, do they need um, to know that we have water in case of something like what's happening in the South right now where there's a water crisis? Do they need a plan? Do they need information? and support for long-term changes that we can do in order to change our whole system, not just our own actions at home, but actually the policies that are gonna protect the earth and protect the climate. What is it kids are looking for from you? They need empowerment, they need honest information, and they need ways that they can engage in solutions themselves. Because what I've found over and over that if young people are engaged in positive solutions, then they tend to relax and they tend to just be a lot happier. Great information. Interesting book as well. I want to thank you very much, Mary DeMocker, author of The Parent's Guide to the Climate Revolution. Thanks for joining us.